Well, yes, folks, here we are. Maybe the last show of Two Chaps, Many Cultures, the number one show on the planet of the business of culture and the culture of business, because who knows whether we'll still be around after this. We could be cancelled mm. if we offend somebody. I don't know, mm. maybe. But let's uh, let's talk about it anyway. Let's get this last one in if we can. Stick around. <laughs> You may ask, am I being sarcastic? No. No. <laughs> no. Welcome, everybody. Two chaps, many cultures. Arguably the last episode because we're going <laughs> to offend some people and you're going to want to cancel us. That's for sure. This yep. is episode uh, one of many. And um, we are, in fact, the, what is it, 185? 186, to be there exact. Um, yeah. That's cancelled. Um, no, <laughs> we, we we are the the leading show. The as Brett would say, the number one show on the business of culture and the culture of business. And today we're tackling free speech and also cancel culture and whether the two things are mutually exclusive or whether there is maybe a correlation that is sometimes gets overlooked. Perhaps I don't know. Let's talk mm. about this. And yeah. what, is, what what brought this about, Brad? Why, why are we talking about this? I mean, this is nothing well, new. Well, you know, we, we celebrated uh, the first Japanese winner of the Masters at the golf, right? A story tradition, uh, which, which is the pinnacle, I guess, of, you know, all sports have their pinnacles. I guess the Masters might be classed as the pinnacle of the, um, of the sport. Yeah. And, um, you know, you would think that, you know, that's great. It's a great achievement. Uh, the commentators, which I'm always a fan of comment, I like commentating of golf. It's rather low key usually, you know, there's usually, you know, there's a bit of crowd background, but it's usually low key. It's very quiet and um, wonderful celebration of the win at the end where the commentators kind of said, what a wonderful achievement. The, what, then they watched the player walk away, right, from, from the from the green, and just was silent. And then we read today about some almost irrelevant podcaster in his mother's basement who decides that he's going to complain about the fact that, uh, well, it, it sounded like the commentators were scared to say anything about the fact that he was Asian. And uh, so they didn't say anything in case they were going to offend anybody. And they called it can cancel culture. They called it cancel culture. That's how... That's how ridiculous these people are getting. So who is this guy? I mean, obviously, I don't follow golf, so I'm sorry. And congratulations to Hideki Matsuyama for being the first Japanese winner of the Masters. Um, and, again, I live in the state of Georgia, and yet uh, Augusta is <laughs> two and a half hours this way, and I still don't watch golf. Um who who is the guy who got his knickers in a twist about this? Oh, that's a good question. See, that's how irrelevant he is. I don't even know who he is, but it, but it made headlines. You know, He's relevant enough to create a wave, right? Well, I guess, but I mean, I'm going to just say the commentator, Jim Nance, right? And uh, you know, and he's a wonderful commentator. He's been around. He's commentated uh, golf for years, right? Um, and uh, you know, he's and he's he's got he's got this big contract, and he's again, you know, I think he's just. He, uh, like, I remember, no, for those that are watching that um, don't watch cricket, of course, I will, you know, I'm kind of calling a little bit of in, in information here. There was a great commentator of cricket years ago, Richie Benno, who said, if you don't have anything to say, don't say it, right? And you just sit there and you just let people watch the game. People are smart when they're watching the game. Now, you might throw in some, a little bit of colour, a little bit of context about the rules and, and the type of shot and things like this, but and that's what I kind of appreciate about golf. I'm not a great golfer, I'm not not a great golf lover, but I appreciate that about golf. It's kind of a low key. It's a description of what's going on and all that kind of thing. So mm -hmm. I appreciated this, and then I but I thought it was either, you know, maybe not even intentional, but culturally, 
you know, when you've got a Japanese winner who doesn't kind of jump around and throw his clubs and all that kind of stuff. He was, yeah, right. And even his caddy, which was actually commented on, his caddy just walked quietly up there, got the ball out of the hole, st stood there next to the flag and just politely bowed to the crowd mm -hmm. and then walked away, right? Mm -hmm. So this is a wonderful demonstration of what we talk about across cultures all the time. Right. So I'm thinking the commentators are just leaving that to the space, which is basically what most people would have thought. Um, but, yeah, no, so it got me thinking about this. How ridiculous do we have to be that, you know, usually, and I'm, you know, we are stereotyping a little bit here, but it's usually older white men, misogynistic men, who decide that they're going to be threatened by something that even doesn't even exist. I mean, you can, I don't care if you want to talk about things that you find that you used to be able to offend people with. And now being, you know, we've grown up as a society and we've evolved somewhat as humans. We hope that we've evolved to the point we can be sensitive to the feelings and the impact that we have on other people. You think that was normal enough, but I don't know. So anyway. obviously, I mean, when, when you when you pass this piece of news on to me and then I actually did my Google thingy and like, oh, really? There's people getting really crazy about this. Yeah. It just A, it told me that, in the bubble that I live in, there's no, there has little to no intersection with the golf bubble. And yeah. secondly, um, the, the, this person who is um, undoubtedly a extreme douchebag um, who has decided that this commentator apparently is afraid of cancel culture, and that's why he would not further comment on the ethnicity nationality of the winner of this tournament. So I, I read through this piece and this, this, I think that that's why it's apropos here because this is exemplary for this fear of being canceled or this labeling of inappropriate behavior. No, excuse me, l the labeling of calling out or addressing inappropriate behavior as cancel culture. It's a battle term. It has nothing to do with anyone getting canceled, nobody's getting canceled. Dr. Right. Seuss books aren't getting canceled. Simply the family of Dr. Seuss decided not to publish certain works of the, the late um, author and illustrator for reasons that they decided were relevant. Um, nobody's um, canceling the state of Georgia um, simply because the Georgia government passes certain laws that not everybody agrees with when it comes to voting rights, for example. Nobody's canceling that government or the state or the people therein because I'm proof I'm still here. I didn't get canceled. I live in Georgia. But when people like Will Smith and the production team move their production of a movie out of Georgia because of things they don't approve of, then that is, I think, a sign of free speech, if I'm not mistaken. It actually is also a sign of a very free market of opinions that will sort itself out. So the term cancel culture, I, I checked on this. I, I did some, some research and numbers count and hits that you find online. Apparently, cancel culture is a term to accuse others of being um, public shamers and um, ostracizing people. Those who blame the, uh, the alleged ostracizers tend to be of a certain political color and to be of a certain mindset. And I, I find that quite intriguing because that political leaning and mindset is often associated with that of a free market, small government, and mm -hmm. capitalistic um, flow of goods and services and, and capital and money. So I find it kind of ridiculous and also a little bit contradictory, if not, what's the term? Uh, Hypocritical. That's the word. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. By the you way, know, you know, it should be no surprise that hypocrite hi, being hypocrite is not unique to any but any particular human. I'm sure we've all been critical of that or been guilty of that. But anyway, 
Well, but the word I, I want to I had to look up the word ostracize because it is actually the, this public shaming is nothing new. So some would say, well, cancel culture, this is an outgrowth of this Me Too public shaming. Yeah, it may be. Mm -hmm. Yet ost ostracizing goes back to the ancient Greek um polis, the um Athens and Sparta and all the other city-states on, on the Peloponnese. Peloponnes, I don't know how to pronounce it, on the Greek peninsula. Um, so they would, the, the public would expel potential, um, well, wrongdoers or transgressors who they think would could potentially have a negative impact on the well-being of society. They would exile them for up to 10 years. So mm -hmm. hence the term ostracized that was coined by the ancient Greeks. So that is a, a procedure that has been with at least in the Western world for 3000 years. I'm sure there's a similar tradition in other mm -hmm. cultures that have nothing to do with um, Hellenistic Western white culture, but the process of identifying something that does not fit the consensus of a society. So, okay, we don't like this. Hence we reprimand it. Either way, either, either we send you off to an island or we say, hey, we don't like you anymore. We're not going to buy your product. We're not going to give you airtime. Nobody's going to hold a microphone in your face any longer. Or we simply won't print your inane articles or, or listen to your pockets or whatever it will be. That is the court of public opinion. It's been like that for at least human memory, I think. So Absolutely. I'm not sure. I'm not sure what this cancel culture <laughs> and the terminology is going to achieve. Well, it's going to achieve reputation, feelings of importance for people who are feel that they are being replaced. To quote a uh, certain white supremacist um, uh, news. Uh, new, well, not even news. Um, how do you call it? It's entertainment. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's misnews. Um, uh, yeah, so it's it, it. I guess it just kind of tends to be held by these people who feel that they're threatened. They have always been in power. They've always been in charge, and now to be actually to it, and it's not happening. But to 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 be made feel like there's a potential that they might become the very people that they've put down in in their in their life then that's scary to them and it, and so they feel like they're being cancelled or their right to offend people has been cancelled i think you've done it i've seen it and i've done it too mm. we've actually said to people you know what we go live every day we put our stuff live it is you can agree with it you can disagree with it but we show up every day and we tell you about things we think about and the things we learn and the things that we're curious about, right? We do it every single day. And I tell the people, with these people that say just that one example, oh, we can't offend anybody anymore. So I say to them, I do a live show every day. You are welcome to come on this show and write us a list of all the people you feel you want the right to offend. We can even bring those people on. Yes. I can bring a, we can bring women on here. We can bring African Americans. We can bring Mexican people. If you want to keep offending them, if you want to keep offending gay people, we'll bring them on. And you can just tell them that you want the right. You can tell them to their face. You want the right to keep offending them. Mm -hmm. Do that. And and you know what happens? You, we, then you, we get accused. I get accused. I don't know whether it happens to you. Oh, you just want to make me look silly. Exactly. That yeah, ship that. sailed, dickhead. That ship sailed. <laughs> you, you've already accomplished well, that well I'm, yourself. You've already gone past that. Um, you know, but so let's forget that. But I'm just going to give you a chance to come on and defend it. It's all you do. You don't. We're not going to. We're not going to ostracize you. We're not going to send you off to an island, unless you know. But <laughs> I, I think what I find interesting from. Uh, a perspective, as hard as it may be for me to to take that perspective from 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 a an observational point of view, with maybe a few years under my belt and and, and trying to take a somewhat neutral position, um, what I find interesting is there seems to be a pendulum swing, right? So public opinion is mm -hmm. swinging in back and forth, right? And yeah. for 
for decades, we're talking US or Western societies mostly. Uh, there's been this in the US, this, this, this trend towards more um, conservatism, right? And we, we've seen the, the peak of that maybe on January 6th this year. And now the pendulum is gradually swinging back, and it it has been swinging back a little bit, but it it, it there there is this motion, right? So for forty years or so, um, conservative circles in the U.S. have successfully um, gaslit people and discredited certain opinions and made them look bad and put them in the canceled basket so conservatives who are now accusing liberals of being cancelers have been doing some a lot of their canceling themselves and are now a little bit surprised that they're being repaid in similar coin now this ain't helping anyone this this swinging back and forth and canceling each other out is obviously nonsense just as much as as fighting over a plastic excavator in the sandbox uh, what toddlers do so it's it's a fairly immature behavior to begin with but it's a phenomenon that i think we have been able to observe over the course of history for i don't know how long generations centuries millennia so what i found interesting is though that with these new ways of communicating that are to our disposal. I mean, look at us. We have a camera and a microphone, and we just take a voice. Nobody gives it to us. We can take it because we have the tools. So that has become um, an, an accessible amplifier for a lot of those people who usually wouldn't be heard at all. And I think it can create this artificial attention that may be seen out of proportion by some, right? So it, it's, I think social media and all the technology that we've developed in the last 15, 20 years have given this public shaming a little bit of a new dimension, wouldn't you agree? Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I think you're right. Um, and, you know, certainly we're being facetious. We, we, there's a little bit of a tinge to, uh, to what we're saying here. Um, you know, we've, we're being a little sarcastic, but the truth is, and we would prefer if people would just stop the, you know, I mean, it's not, it's okay. It's our preference, my, my preference anyway. I'm not going to speak for my wonderful colleague, but I'm saying wouldn't the preference be if you just, instead of just laying down on ground, holding your breath and kicking your legs and your arms, if you said, well, obviously what I said or what I, you know, things I've said in the past, and I'm guilty of this, me personally, Brett Parry, I'm telling you, I'm guilty of using terminology, taking actions, doing things that have damaged and offended people in the past. But that's what it is. That's part of being human. I've made those mistakes and I'm probably going to make more mistakes. That's okay. But I'm going to kind of ask a question and go, if someone calls me out, is that going to serve anybody's, um, really, anybody's uh, purpose or, or, or well-being if I kick, kick and scream on the ground? It's really going to be better if I learn because then I can teach my children and then I can also feel and understand to whatever degree I can the impact that I'm having and that other people are having doing the same thing. So all we're saying is that, you know, we're here, as I said, every day you can come on here, we can discuss this in a reasonable, you know, in, in a reasonable um, way and we can work it out. We can, you know, we may learn something. We've always said over this 186 episodes, we are here to learn, we're curious, We've had so many wonderful guests on here, and we're just here to learn. And, you know, you might, you might convince us one day that your right to being offensive is right. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe. I'm, I'm, it's doubtful, but... Um, it's doubtful. It's very right. doubtful. I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to keep you from trying. <laughs> not um, your the, 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 I, I read an in, uh, interesting terminology um, because I, I like the term calling out because it 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 also is is, is comes with a with a starter kit of accountability right um, but it it can have an, a result that is not desirable for either one the one that's calling out and the one that's being called out because by making shaming public you create resentment um, and it's not necessarily yeah. 
it's not going to change people's behavior. Not it's not likely. So unless you unless you prefer educating and leading by fear and the threat of repercussions. Um, so I, I I learned about a term recently that's called uh, not calling out but calling in. Yeah. And the way that I understand it, I might be off here, but the way I understand it is instead of making it public, have that conversation directly and ideally outside of the public eye, maybe behind closed doors and sit down and be be human with each other. And thereby it might be a less threatening environment. It might be actually an exchange that's happening. It's not, it's going to be a talking with each other rather than a talking about or over each other so that the the calling in instead of calling out I, I i like that terminology and i i will remind myself of doing that because i'm i know i'm guilty of calling out things that don't sit well with me and what i did was i i did something performative right i i voiced an opinion who <laughs> I don't know whether anyone cares about my opinion. There's a saying in this beautiful English language that opinions are like noses and assholes. We all have at least one. So that means everybody has one. And what makes my opinion better or worse than anyone else's? Who is the judge, right? So it, it, it's easy to have an opinion. Hmm. Nothing nothing easier than that. I'm sure there are some philosopher or some smart person who once said that opinions and facts. I don't, I don't remember the quote. I'll find it. It was probably some French philosopher. Um, but it's 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 so much harder to not share an opinion publicly and instead seek out the person that you, whose behavior you disagree with and confront them or engage with them one-on-one -on -one outside of the public. Difficult to do? I will remind myself of that. Yeah, yeah. The calling in, though, I've seen people, I like the term too, but I don't think the calling in necessarily has to be in private. It can be it can be public. I've seen people do effective calling mm. in, in a pub, on a public setting, whether it be on social media streams and things like that. If their intent is not to harm the person that they're calling in, they're just basically, that's a kind of efficiency. It is a, 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 a vehicle by which you might say, okay, I see what you said, here's what I've learned, and here's a better way to do it, then you have the chance to educate a whole lot more people, to mm. your point, mm. instead of saying, you idiot, you're wrong, blah, 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 nobody's going to, you know, I've done it before, don't worry, I'm, and I'll probably do it again, you know. Some people just need to be, you know, like, I don't know, maybe they do. I, that's my judgment. I shouldn't pass judgment on people, but it is... It is a far better way to do it, just to call in and say, hey, this is, and even if it's not you that particularly is on the receiving end of said offence or said potential um, Im negative impact, if you know in the past you've had an experience and seen other people be impacted negatively by it, perhaps you can bring that experience in. Maybe that, and, and especially if you kind of uh, look and sound like the person that you're calling in, Maybe that's even less threatening to them. They find somebody who l looks and sounds like them um, actually saying it, that, you know, being humble enough to say, I've learned, I've, I've done it myself, I understand where you're coming from, that, uh, you know, that, that's kind of wrong. Can we have a look at a new way of looking at it, you know? Um, anyway. I, I agree with you, and, and, and still I, I, I'm, I'm surprised by, by the, the faulty logic of the of the label throwers or the accusers on either side, right? It's, it's right. Uh, well, I should be allowed to say this and why am I being canceled for having an opinion? Um, there, there is this, this per perceived um, uh, uh, restriction of free speech. I, I don't think that any of that is happening. Last time I checked, all of you can say whatever you want. Mm -hmm. Nobody's gonna stop you from doing that. I think the what some people seem to to forget is that with free speech also comes the um, the expectation of a response, right? Whether, whether people like what you have to say or not is not up to you. That's up to 
the audience that you speak to. So if you have a, if you use your right of free speech to whatever audience you have, you better be ready for the response because that comes with it, right? And right. There, there is a, a level of accountability in that as well. And if people are calling you out or in, um, that will mean that you have to find a way to deal with that and be okay with that because it's not just you who has an opinion, it's other people who may disagree with you. And that is what a discussion is. Absolutely. That is what a, a, a discourse, that is what a, a pluralistic society is. It's the, the diversity of thought, it's the diversity of ideas, and then it's the exchange of those and finding out which one do we want to work with as a group of people. And as a group of people, we'll decide that in usually in a public forum. And sometimes that will mean that my opinion will not be the one supported by a majority. And sometimes it will mean that your opinion may not be the one supported by a wide majority of people. Grow up, deal with it. Absolutely. That's been a part of being a human. Play the game or go home, take a bat and ball and go home. That's fine. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> or, come on, or come on this show and uh, tell us all about it. How bad mm. you feel for being cancelled. <coughs> we'll listen to you for a little bit. <laughs> we'll listen to you for a little bit. Karen says, here, what do we got? Karen says, labels, that's a whole episode of TCMC. And, yes, that would be a whole episode, um, labels. Well, Karen, um, yeah. um, sounds like you have something to say about that. Maybe, <laughs> we should, well, maybe we should set you up for this. This is good. Good. Yeah. See, we... You know, smart, smart. We need more smart people on the show. And yes. believe me, Karen is a lot smarter than me. That is for sure. <laughs> and but anyway, uh, it's... Uh, none of us are cancelled, and there's going to be a show again tomorrow, right? So don't worry about that. And yeah. um, and whether somebody decides not to tune in because they don't like what we say, that is their right. And yeah, we'll, we look forward to watching your show. <laughs> yes. Yeah. when you do it that's 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 it well, all right that back to canceling my um no i'm not canceling anything but back to checking off stuff of the to-do list for today all right that's right it is late in the day but um there's still plenty to do thank you for everybody but not canceling us and joining in thank you karen for coming back as always and um, don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you like what you hear and you or you don't like what you hear. Subscribe and we'll come back and annoy you again. If you really want to be annoyed, we can come back and do it every day. If you just subscribe. Uh, leave, leave nasty comments. Yes, absolutely. That's yeah. Yes. I mean, people have done that before. And guess what? We canceled. Yes. <laughs> we canceled them. <laughs> they got their just desserts. <laughs> Anyway, that's fine. Well, thank you again, sir. Good to see you. Um, go and tick that uh, to-do list. I will do the same. Look forward to seeing everybody back here tomorrow. We'll see you back tomorrow. Ciao, ciao. Bye-bye. Right. Bye.